effort on praising smartness versus praising um, um, effort. And it's, it's a study with children who were taken into a room and they're given um, a test, kind of a, a psychological test or a puzzle test with their hands. And they all complete the test. Half of the groups are, are told, okay, you've done really well. You're so smart. You just does so well. Would you like to do another one? The other half of the room are told, okay, looks like you worked hard at that. Yeah, you were thinking well. I like what I see in your analysis. Are you, would you like to try one that's a little bit harder? And you'll see the, um, the out, outcome in just a second. And the message certainly is to have fun, to, to be having fun while we're making music, while we're really serious in our pur purpose. And finally, one must fail to grow. And it's okay, I mean, we, may, we have to make a mistake to get better. We have to experiment to come up with an even more imaginative interpretation. And this is John Nakamatsu talking. And John Nakamatsu was a gold medal of the Van Cliver International Piano Competition in Fort Worth probably about eight years ago. Recently, he was speaker at the Amateur Van Cliver Competition Awards Dinner. And he had been accosted by a good many of the performers in the hall saying, oh, what did I do wrong? Why did I fail? Etc. And this is a speech that he gave after that. And I'm good to play it. And let us talk a little bit about styles of giving praise when we're talking to students. Um, Whitaker, in his book, Dealing with Difficult Parents and the Parents in Difficult um, Situations, has a section by Ben Bissell, who presented a paper at a leadership conference. And they talked about five elements of um, giving praise. First, first suggestion, the first uh, element of, of giving praise is that praise must be authentic. Authentic praise then is genuine. And um, um, when things are going right and we note it, then the parent also gets it, the child gets it, and we're in a positive way. Number two, praise should be specific. So we want to give praise that shines a light on a particular behavior that we like. Um, even doing that with parents, uh, in terms of supporting children, um, and certainly with the children themselves. Um, I left this one out on the uh, slide, but praise that is effective is immediate and timely. In other words, it's important especially to incorporate praise early and to note strong points just as soon as they've occurred. Not to wait till some failure has come, and then it, the praise doesn't have nearly as much um, um, effectiveness. Another requirement is that effective praise must be clean, and this is the, the byproduct of clean praise. It can't have but in it. You can't say to a student, you know, you played the legato and showed me this week beautifully, but da 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 da, no buts. Um, so it must be clean. And then finally, it's best to praise students in private. Um, and the reason is, is that a student placed praise in private is never placed in, in an embarrassing position with his or her friends comparing themselves to them. And all people want to avoid that, or most people want to work with empathy. A second um, motivational theory is achievement goal orientation. And that's when um, the theory that says there are two distinct ways that individuals are motivated to achieve, task orientation and ego orientation. And task orientation is a form of intrinsic uh, motivation. That's when an individual task is involved or an activity is experienced more as an end in itself. <coughs> When a person's ego oriented, they're you know, motivated by positive comments or by comparing themselves to other people. And I especially want to mention just a third way of thinking. I'm not sure this is a motivation theory, but it's felt that some students really suffer from preparation anxiety for recitals and competitions. And sometimes children or even young adults will think, they have performance anxiety, but it's really preparation anxiety. Deep down, they know they're not prepared. Sometimes they may not even play so well and not even know that they're not prepared. That's really serious. Um, and I think it's endemic with some teachers um, that we have to make sure that we know that they're well prepared and that the children know or the adults know.